Hi, it's Mr. Anderson and welcome to Biology Essentials video 13. This is on free energy capture and storage, but what you'll quickly learn is that this is mostly about photosynthesis. And this is actually a map of photosynthesis on our planet. So what you could see, this is both on land and on the ocean. You'll see that photosynthesis is going to be highest in areas like here, South America, uh, that'd be the Amazon, uh, or Eastern uh, North America, or you'd find it in a lot of uh, Northern Europe and Northern Asia. Um, and so it's mostly about photosynthesis. Oh, and we also see it in the ocean. So we're going to see a ton of it near the equator, but not exactly at the equator. And I imagine that has to do with the currents. Um, the other thing it's going to be about is going to be about respiration. And so I'm going to try to get through the whole thing on photosynthesis and respiration. If it seems like I'm going too fast or it's not understandable, I've made a video on both photosynthesis and respiration <laughs> individually. Um, and so take a look at those, and I, I hope that'll be helpful. Um, so what am I going to talk about in this? Well, just like in the last podcast, I'm going to talk about how life uses free energy. The goal of life is to make ATP, so we can use energy. Now, there's two life strategies. There's the life strategy of the autotrophs, an example would be a plant. Those are things that make their own food. Um, and then the heterotrophs. And an example would be you. And you're a heterotroph. That means you eat your own food. And so autotrophs on our planet mostly use photosynthesis. So they take energy from the sun in both the light reaction and the Calvin cycle to make sugars uh, or to make macromolecules that they can use. There's an obscure group of organisms on our planet that don't have light available. And it doesn't mean that they're out of luck. They use chemosynthesis. So they, they use the energy found in chemicals to actually make their food. Um, the other lifestyle then is heterotrophs. Heterotrophs are going to um, use cellular respiration, which is essentially oxygen, mitochondria, sugar, and they're going to make, uh, make ATP from that. Um, it requires oxygen, which pulls on those electrons. We'll talk about that in a second. And the process is glycolysis, Krebs cycle, and then finally the electron transport chain. If you don't happen to have oxygen, um, you can also use a process called fermentation. I'll explain that. Now, the thing that I really haven't talked about, oh, I haven't talked, I'll talk about evolution as well. But the one thing that I want to make sure that you understand is that autotrophs aren't making the food for us. They're making the food for themselves. And so not only does a plant do photosynthesis, they then use cellular respiration um, to actually break the energy and, and get the energy out of the food that they ended up making. And so this kind of summarizes that cycle. Um, so what we have are the, the way of the heterotrophs. They take organic molecules and oxygen, and they use that to make carbon dioxide and water. We call that process, process cellular respiration. And then autotrophs will actually convert that back into organic molecules. So they can then utilize that energy. And so most of those on our planet use photosynthesis, like plants. Uh, and most of the heterotrophs use cellular respiration. Example would be like a cheetah. But I do want to briefly talk about chemosynthesis. Chemosynthesis occurs where there's not a lot of light on our planet. Where's a great example of that? Deep, dark in the ocean. So let's talk about photosynthesis and respiration. So this is uh, my animation for how photosynthesis works. And the one thing that you want to always 
the, the problem when you're doing photosynthesis and respiration is that you get so into the steps that you don't really understand what's going on. You miss the forest for the trees. And so what we're doing in photosynthesis is taking carbon dioxide, plants take that in, taking water, converting that to glucose, and eventually to oxygen. And so if I animate it, it looks like this. And so what we're doing is we're taking the carbon in carbon dioxide, and we're actually turning that into carbon in uh, glucose. We're releasing oxygen as a waste product. But what we're really doing is we're storing energy in this glucose molecule. The delta G, or the free energy, is positive. That means that we're storing energy in that glucose molecule. We're actually storing it in these bonds right here between the carbon and the uh, hydrogen. Now, it's not as simple. I wish it was. It's not as simple a chemical reaction as this. It's actually pretty complex. Um, but what I don't want you to miss is I don't want you to miss what happens to the carbon dioxide, what happens to the water, and how does that convert into glucose and, and oxygen. And so if you've missed that, then uh, I've done a bad job. Okay, whenever I'm thinking about photosynthesis, I actually break it down into the two words so I can remember the different parts. The photo part is the light reaction, and photo means light, and synthesis means to build, and so that's going to be the Calvin cycle. And so the photo part, or the light reaction, is going to take place. The whole thing takes, of photosynthesis takes place in the chloroplast. And here's a bunch of chloroplasts inside a plant cell. But the light reaction is going to take place right here. It's in the thylakoid membrane. Okay, next let's go to cellular respiration. What happens in cellular respiration? Cellular respiration, we're actually using the energy in those sugars, so in glucose. In the presence of oxygen, we're breaking that down into carbon dioxide and water, and we're releasing energy from that. So let's see what that looks like. So we break down that glucose. That's an exergonic reaction. We're releasing energy. We're making carbon dioxide, we're making water, but we're mostly making energy in the form of ATP that we can use. Again, it's not as simple as this, so let's get to uh, what respiration really looks like and how it, where it takes place. And in order to do cellular respiration, you need a mitochondria, and you also need one more thing, you need O2, you need oxygen. So the parts of the mitochondria that you should become familiar with, uh, first of all, we've got an outer membrane. Outer membrane is going to be this portion right here. We also have an inner membrane, so it looks like that. Uh, we have an inner membrane space. The inner membrane space is going to be right between the outer and the inner membrane. And you see here that we have these folds that go on uh, the inside of that inner membrane. And what that does is increase the surface area. But the last thing that we should become familiar with is actually called uh, the matrix. Matrix is going to be the inside of the mitochondria. And so the parts of cellular respiration, the first part is called glycolysis. That'll actually take place out here. Next thing is going to be the Krebs cycle. Krebs cycle will take place in here. That's in the matrix. And then finally, we have the electron transport chain. Electron transport chain is going to take place along that inner membrane. Uh, and so the reason we have that folds is to increase surface area. Now this looks a little scary, the diagram, but it shouldn't be that scary because we're going to miss all the intermediates. So what do we start with? Glucose.
concentration. So photosynthesis and respiration are how we utilize energy, free energy from the sun, uh, to make ATP, to make ourselves grow. Uh, so I hope that's helpful.